These are the five financial goals you need to achieve in your 20s to set you up for your future. First, build your life blueprint. Something that took me years to learn is there's no point in building your wealth if you don't build your life. When I turned 21, I had no idea what I wanted for my future. The only two things I actually knew were one, I hated my job, and two, saving money was good. So that's pretty much all I did. I turned down friend hangouts, bailed on travel plans, and avoided doing anything that cost money. And instead, I just went home to watch TV just to save a little bit more money, all the while daydreaming about saving enough to retire and live. But then one day, I got into a pretty bad accident on the highway with multiple cars, and I realized just how miserable I had become. I was making and saving money for the sake of retiring without knowing what the heck I was gonna retire to. And I realized saving 50,000, 100,000, or a million dollars means absolutely nothing if you aren't happy in doing stuff you love or being with the people that you love. But it was building my life blueprint that changed everything. It became a guide for nearly all my financial decisions. And here's how you can build yours. Get a piece of paper and answer this honestly. Without thinking about money or accessibility, what are the things you enjoy in your life? Do you prefer the flexibility of renting or the stability of owning a house? Do you want a fancy car or just something that works? What challenges do you enjoy taking on? Your initial responses aren't gonna be your final blueprint, but they will guide you towards a direction of things and activities to start testing today. Sort of a bit like dating. You won't fall in love with every person you date, but every person you date will help you figure out something you liked or didn't like. And over time, the accumulation of these trial and errors will give you a better understanding of things you love in life and things you don't care to spend money on. But this is all useless if you don't accomplish the next goal of finding your halfway point. After I built my life blueprint, I realized that the best time to do the things I really wanted to do was in my 20s, while I still had the health and the energy. Knowing this, I set up my savings goal, an amount I knew I needed before making one of the biggest decisions of my life. I never used to track stuff very formally. I saved as much as I reasonably could, but then I decided to, once a month, sit down with my bank statements and put everything left over in my savings tracker. And I couldn't believe what I saw. But first, I gotta say tracking your savings is very motivating. I became a lot more aware of what I bought because it turned into a fun game where I had to try to level up and save more every month. It gave me a clear idea on where most of my money was going and what things I could cut back on that aren't important to me. But my biggest takeaway is, I realized I was spending way more than I thought. About $2,700 more. Before the savings tracker, I was mentally accounting for what I had left over after bills, food, and clothes. But I was ignoring all the expenses from my side hustles. I always justified these expenses as a just a one-time thing. But thanks to the savings tracker, I could see that I made this excuse often. You can use any app or tracker to do this, or you can download my free savings goal tracker that I used with the link below. Immediately after hitting my savings goal, I put my two weeks in and I solo backpacked Southeast Asia for six months. Sure, this knocked my savings number down a bit, but the memories and the experiences I built were priceless. Like I would have never imagined riding camels in India, hiking in the Himalayas, or even getting bitten by a stray dog in Myanmar. So find your halfway point between saving and spending your money as you move towards your life blueprint. But how much money should you save? The rule of thumb is the 50-30-20 rule. Basically, 50% of your take-home pay goes towards your needs, like housing, food, and utilities, 30% for your wants, vacations, entertainment, and Mr. Magic Lamps, and 20% to your savings. So if you earn about $6,000 a month, $3,000 would go towards your needs, $1,800 into your wants, and $1,200 would go towards your savings for future investments. If you can save more, that's fantastic. But the beauty of the 50-30-20 rule is it gives you flexibility and encourages you to look for cheaper alternatives. Premium Netflix or regular? Organic free-range guacamole or regular? Whole Foods or little? But keep in mind the 50-30-20 rule isn't a one-size-fit-all solution. You need to understand your own personal financial situation and readjust the ratio accordingly. Personal finance is personal for a reason. The next milestone I call maximize your limit. What's wild is my cousin didn't listen to me on this and he lost out on $113,000. But the best part is after you do it once, it becomes second nature. This is kind of a sad story, but one of my cousin's parents are really bad with their finances and despite me trying to help them, they never listen. 
So one day, and I, I didn't know this happened until after the fact, so don't blame me. When my cousin started using credit cards, he never learned he had to pay them back in full every month. He occasionally paid the minimum or just flat out missed payments, which ruined his credit score. And he didn't think twice about it until 2020 when he was trying to buy a house. And although interest rates were at an all time low at 3%, he couldn't get anything close to that rate. And don't underestimate how much a few percentage points can save you. On a $350,000 30 year mortgage, the difference in total interest you'll pay at a 4% versus a 5.5% interest rate is over $113,000 but a bad credit score impacts more than just your mortgage. Renting an apartment will be harder, getting a car will be more expensive, and sometimes even getting a job could be more challenging. Credit scores range from below 300 to over 850, but I only recommend you get your credit score above a 759. When it comes to personal finance, I'm all about efficiency, and you only need above a 759 to get the most favorable rates and benefits, which is why I believe obsessing over a score above 800 is largely a waste of time. I recommend you check your credit report at least once a year to see where you stand. The official site is annualcreditreport.com, where it's free and it won't hurt your credit score to check. The easiest way to build your credit score is by using your credit cards responsibly. You should only buy things with your credit card if you have the money right now to pay it off. Also, keep your credit card utilization ratio below 30%, meaning if your credit card lets you borrow up to $10,000, always keep your credit card balance under 3,000. But I get it, sometimes it's hard to build your credit with credit cards because a lot of them only approve you based on your credit score. So if you virtually have no credit or have poor credit from mistakes you made in the past, it can be hard to be approved for one. But I found a company called Empower that can help you if you find yourself in a situation like this. Empower is a money management app making financial help accessible to everyone. They recently launched their newest feature called Empower Thrive, giving you access to a $200 to $400 credit limit that you can grow up to $1,000 over time with your on-time payments. And the best part is all credit scores are welcome. Empower doesn't judge solely off your credit score. Instead, they look into your connected bank accounts on their app to look at your real-time cash flow like your income, expenses, bills, et cetera, to understand how responsible you are today. Plus, Empower Thrive offers you flexible payment plans so you can pick a plan that works for you and matches your lifestyle, giving you your best shot at paying it back on time so you have a chance at building your positive credit history. One of these plans lets you schedule your payment to be paid in full automatically on your next paycheck to receive 0% APR. And if you keep on making on-time payments, Empower will regularly increase your credit limit to get you up to $1,000. And once you are approved for your credit limit, you have instant access and can deposit it right into your bank account to use. So if you're someone who wants another way to build your credit history or know someone else who needs to, leave a comment below and check out Empower Thrive with the link in my description. Thanks to Empower for sponsoring this video. Next, adopt the chess and rice strategy, which contributed the most to my financial success, bar none. And it goes like this. Thousands of years ago, there was an emperor who learned about the game of chess, and he was so impressed by it that he offered the game's inventor one wish, anything he wanted. The inventor humbly said that he just wanted rice, one grain of rice on the first square of the chessboard, then two grains of rice on the second, four on the third, and so on, doubling each time all the way through to the 64th black and white square. The emperor smirked and quickly agreed, thinking this was such a silly and simple request. But this single promise led to the collapse of his entire empire. By the 30th square alone, the emperor's debt compounded to over a billion grains of rice. By the time he reached the 64th square, the emperor owed over 18 quintillion, with a Q, grains of rice, bankrupting the entire kingdom. And that's exactly what you need to do with your finances. Start investing your money and let it compound for decades. If you invest $10,000 in year one and get an average of 10% return on it with the S&P 500, you'd earn an additional $1,000. In year two, you earn $1,100. In year three, $1,210. Just like chess and rice, over time you earn interest on the money you originally saved, plus the interest you received for that original amount. In just three years, you've earned an additional $3,310 without lifting a finger. If we graph this over the next few decades, we get an exponential growth curve, which is why Albert Einstein said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. But what's an even better feeling than seeing your money grow when you're not working are the options you have when you're older. 
You can start a new career, spend more time with your family, or even retire early. Personally, I primarily do a passive fund investment strategy. This is the easiest way to get into the stock market and you can just set it and forget it. I invest in passively managed index funds like FXAIX or VOO, which tracks the performance of the S&P 500, basically the 500 largest companies in the US. You can use any broker to do this. I've been using Moomoo for the past two years. It's free, fast, and easy to use. Sign up with the link below, and it's a great way to support the channel for free. Next, start proofing yourself, not proving yourself. Like many of you, when I worked in corporate America, I wanted to prove myself to my boss and my coworkers. I was caught in this idea of constantly seeking validation from them and gunning for a promotion. In retrospect, it was all pretty toxic. We'd all brag about how many hours we worked or how we were working so hard that we had to skip lunch. We'd kill ourselves just to reach a deadline. And for what? The truth is, the company doesn't care about you. You are just a cog in the machine. If you disappear tomorrow, the company would just replace you with another cog, as if you've never existed. So instead of proving myself to others, I learned to start proofing myself. I stopped seeking validation and instead focused on self-validation. I started upskilling and learning new things to the point that I became both indispensable and self-sustainable. And at that stage, I no longer felt confined by my job because I knew, without a doubt, I could easily find a better job or use those skills to start my own business. Steve Martin once said, be so good they can't ignore you. Once you're at that point, you'll be more confident in asking for what you deserve. In my case, I constantly pushed for pay raises and promotions because I knew what I was worth. And any extra income I got, I just funneled into my chess and rice strategy so I could reach my financial goals faster. Which leads me to something you've got to start accepting. And it's that even if you're doing everything you can with your money, you might feel like you could be doing even more. And that might be because you don't know the five high income skills you need to make the most amount of money in the least amount of time. Click here to discover the best high income skills you need.